so what was the question again? Oh, wait, why is it called the traffic jam? Well, you know, the reason is it's because I have two really cool cars. Seriously cool cars. And I love drifting, racing, <clears throat> because I am fast and slick. And plus, I like to create a bit of traffic jam myself with a whole lot of great music. Burumunaka, my name is Real, your host and DJ, right here on the Today FM Traffic Jam every weekday from 3 p.m. to 7. Right here on Today FM, today's hit music. <laughs> This bulletin changes to flag won't affect Fiji UK relations, says British envoy. Fiji Russia discuss bilateral issues and signing of agreement. And new US ambassador meets Prime Minister. Good evening, I'm Jackie Spate, and this is FBC News. The British High Commission in Suva says a new national flag will not in any way sever ties between the UK and Fiji. The government has announced that it will scrap the Union Jack and the shield on the flag as they are no longer relevant to a modern Fiji. Akusita Tale reports. The flag contains symbols that reflect Fiji's colonial past. All that is about to change as Prime Minister Voreng Mbanimarama announced that it is time to sever links that are no longer relevant. The Union flag belongs to the British, not to us. The shield on our flag has the British lion and the cross of St. George, a British patron saint. What does this have to do with us? They are the symbols of the colonizer, Britain. Britain's representative in Fiji does not believe that the move will affect relations between the two countries. That won't affect the very close political relationship we have and as we move ahead we'll continue to look for ways to cooperate closely uh, with Fiji and help Fiji um, uh, move, move forward as it um, deepens and strengthens uh, democracy um, uh, over the next few years. Drummond acknowledges the decision is a big one and it's only for the government and Fijians. You know, the government uh, is uh, clearly going to take this for process forward uh, this year, so I think we're going to see a change uh, by, um, uh, by October, by Fiji Day. Um, I think it's a really interesting process. We, we will simply observe, uh, see how this goes, but um, uh, I, think it's, uh, I think it's going to be very interesting to see uh, what comes out of the end of it. On the streets, there are mixed reactions from the public. And I think it's a good idea for government because uh, we need the changes, eh? Because the government at the moment, they've done lots of changes in our country, so I hope something going to be uh, unique in our country. Our flag shouldn't be changed because for a long time we have been protected by the sign that's here on this flag. It should be changed because Fiji is an independent country, so our flag should be something that represents Fiji. I think it's about time for the Fiji flag to be changed. This is a very good idea. I think the color of the Fiji flag should be white and on the side it should be blue. whole flag should be white and the, the edging of the thing is should be blue. I think we should change it because we're no longer under the British rule. I think it should change because for the past few years there's been no change. Fiji's intention to lead the other Commonwealth countries to introduce a flag that expresses who we are and what we are has also sparked international media interest. Fijians have been encouraged to get involved in the process to create a new flag and the democracy's most important symbol for a modern, independent and strong Fiji. Akusita Tale, FBC News. Meanwhile, FBC News spoke with one of the designers of the existing flag, Tessa McKenzie, who, along with some political parties, has strongly opposed the government's move to introduce a new flag. Akusita Tale again with the story. The flag of Fiji was first flown on 10th October 1970. The flag carries the designs of Tessa McKenzie and late Robbie Wilcock, who entered identical designs in a competition for the flag. 
when you design a flag you have to think very carefully what are the symbols that are relevant for everybody and not just for now and it seemed obviously that the union flag the you know the british union flag was important so that went up in the top corner that bit was easy but it wasn't quite so easy to think of a, a really good symbol for the, the what we call the fly and it was only when we suddenly realized well of course there's the the coat of arms the only real perhaps um, different thing was the, the background. What background do you use? And I thought was well, straight away the sea. Pale blue? We don't want the dark blue like our neighbours. Pale blue for our ocean? And it's very significant. Very few flags have pale blue background. The announcement to change the national flag after 44 years was not welcomed by Mackenzie. Well, I'm very disappointed because I think it's uh, not a very wise move. Why is it not a wise move? Well, because our Fiji flag is very well known all over the world. We take it to the rugby matches, we win the rugby and everybody sees our flag. Similar sentiments were voiced by political parties who have called for a referendum. I think the people uh, uh, of Fiji should have a very clear choice of whether they want the flag to be changed or not. Uh, so the only way you can ascertain that quite effectively and in a democratic manner is by a referendum. However, we believe that um, uh, changing the national flag, you know, at this moment is not the most important issue for, or should not be the most important issue for this government. It's about ownership. The people must own the flag. The people have, constant, have always owned the flag. The flag is a sign of our national identity. It's a national symbol. All, all over the world we are identified from this flag uh, and have been identified with this flag for so long. Meanwhile, the Social Democratic Liberal Party is also opposing the announcement by starting up an online petition. Akusita Tale, FBC News. Russia's Deputy Foreign Minister Igor Morgulov is in the country holding talks with the Foreign Affairs Ministry. This afternoon, Morgulov met with senior officials of the Foreign Affairs Ministry, led by Acting Permanent Secretary Esala Nayasi. The meeting discussed current bilateral issues and prospective areas for new cooperation, including the finalization and signing of a Fiji-Russia Memorandum of Understanding. Discussions also focused on regional developments and how Fiji and Russia can strengthen cooperation in the international national arena. Murgulov met Minister Ratunoke Kumbombola earlier today. The new resident U.S. Ambassador to Fiji, Judith Sefkin, has relayed her government's commitment to working in a meeting with Prime Minister of Rengenbani Marama. Sefkin also spoke of their commitment to strengthening relations between the nations. Sefkin arrived in the country this week to take up her new appointment. This has been long a, a dream of mine to come to Fiji and really? to Have you happy. been here before? No, I, I confess this is my first opportunity to come to your beautiful mm. country. Um, but uh, I'm very honored to be representing the United States of America. Sefkin succeeds Frankie Reed, who has now been posted to Australia. Still to come, prime movers arrive for transportation of four large generators. Mmm, Bollywood hero panti re. Mmm, mm. get this. Mmm. Hero, 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 sapna dekhela band karo. Kya karo yaar, sabko aati nahi, meri jaati nahi. Mirchi Must Morning, I am Ashnil Singh. Hi, I am Ehu Kajal. Shamil ho jai hamare saath Monday to Friday. 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. Mirchi FM, it's hot.
back. This is FBC News. Police are requesting information from the public about pictures circulating on the internet showing toddlers allegedly consuming alcohol and smoking cigarettes. FBC News saw the pictures on social media website Facebook and made inquiry with police. Spokesperson Anna Naisoro says they have taken note of the photos. She's asking anyone who might have direct information that could help police in finding who posted the photos, please contact 917 or their nearest community post. Two of the pictures show the toddlers allegedly drinking what looked like beer from a glass and with lit cigarettes in their mouth. Another two pictures show the boys holding Fijian brand beer bottles. The pictures are yet to be verified. Details of the person who allegedly posted the pictures on Facebook show he is from Lautoka. The pictures are captioned as kids having party. A Lautoka businessman who allegedly imported 5.4 kilograms of pseudoephedrine has been allowed to travel abroad by the Lautoka High Court. Aaron Anwar Khan's lawyer made an application in court this morning to re release his passport and to allow him to travel overseas. Khan was charged last year in August for allegedly illegally importing the drugs. The parcel was sent from the Ukraine and allegedly addressed to Khan. Customs officers intercepted the parcel at the post office at Nandi Airport. Khan's lawyer had asked for name suppression, but this was later squashed in the High Court. The Fiji Women's Crisis Centre recorded an estimated 80 cases of rape and sexual abuse against children in 2014. Whether this is an indication of the prevalence of this type of crime or the impact of awareness campaigns is unclear. FWCC coordinator Shamima Ali says what is apparent, though, is that these figures are underreported. Maggie Boyle tells us more. More often than not, there are headlines of rape cases making the news on a weekly basis. In 2014, the Fiji Women's Crisis Centre recorded close to two cases a week. If we count the branches, count the branches and, and Suva, uh, we would have recorded about the 40 cases of rape. Uh, and about uh, along the same numbers of child abuse, sexual abuse, mostly sexual abuse, but about 10% uh, of those would be physical and emotional abuse only and no sexual abuse. According to Shamima Ali, the coordinator of the Fiji Women's Crisis Center, it's unclear if these figures represent effective awareness or an increase in the crime. It can be a mixture of both, but we, d we don't have detailed uh, uh, surveys and research and analysis done to be able to say one or the other. I would say there is a lot more reporting because there are more services, there is a lot of awareness. We have created this awareness over 30 years, so you know, it takes a long time for things to sink in. Uh, people becoming more aware of their rights because of the work that organizations like us are doing, the police are doing. Um, you know, we have better legislation uh, that makes uh, justice issues more accessible. It's not perfect, but slight improvements in all these places. Ali adds that what they can be clear on is that not all cases of rape and assault are reported. From anecdotal evidence we can say that we are hearing of a lot of cases out there which does not match up with the uh, numbers that are being um, um, reported. And this means um, molestation, sexual harassment, um, uh, rape actually, uh, child sexual abuse, and these are the ones that we hear out in the community. Rape is a type of sexual assault, usually involving sexual intercourse or other forms of sexual penetration perpetrated against persons without that person's consent. Under the crimes decree, rape carries a life imprisonment sentence. Maggie Boyle, F BC News. The Pacific Disability Forum held an information sharing session today as part of the Pacific Enable project. Framed under the UN partnership to promote the rights of persons with disabilities, the session allows Pacific Islands to discuss and learn from each other covering key legislation such as the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. CEO for the Pacific Disability Forum, Setareki Madanawai, says this is the first of many sessions scheduled to walk on the talk on a disability inclusive Pacific. So today is about uh, two years down the road in implementing the project. And what are some of the things you're implementing with regards to this project? Is it primarily on the, the legislation around I, persons with disabilities? Or? Yes, legislation on, on, on the rights of persons with disabilities. It's also on data, disability statistics, but it with children. And we also, uh, in the project, address community-based rehabilitation. 
um, also the issue of employment uh, of persons with disabilities. So uh, as I say, this, these areas, then they are linked to the UN agencies that look after these areas, like ILO with employment, UNICEF with children with disabilities, WHO with community-based rehabilitation, and UNSCAP on, uh, on legislation. Delegates today heard from other UN agencies about the disability status covering employment, children, and disability statistics. Work is progressing according to schedule at the new power station in Kinoya Nasinu. Pernix Fiji Limited, the company contracted to build the power plant, has brought in heavy machinery that will be used to transport four large generator sets to the new site in about a fortnight. Watisoni Rakandroka reports. These are prime movers, heavy duty vehicles that will be attached to a trailer to transport the four new large generators to the new power station in Kinoya, Nasinu. As you can see behind me, are uh two prime movers, specialized prime movers which arrived from New Zealand last week and these prime movers will be engaged in the haulage of the four sets again from Suva Wharf to our Kino SI. The additional generator set cost the government 60 million dollars each. Pernix Fridge Limited will be bringing in more specialized equipment to finish their work at Kinoya. As you can see behind me the construction of FEA's new power station is progressing very well. We have basically completed most of our earthworks and excavation and civil works. Foundations has been completed. We have completed all our slabs and we eagerly await the arrival of the four generators into this country which is expected on the 19th. In about two weeks time this busy section of Suba will be transformed to allow the movement of four large generators from the wharf to Kinoya. This exercise will be the largest movement of heavy machinery the country has ever seen. What is on your record, FBC News. And sports is up next. Here's Jamie. Good evening. Coming up after the break, Roy Krishna and the Wellington Phoenix to play exhibition matches in Fiji. And major improvement by Mosi Mulevoro impresses Ben Ryan. Stay with us for the details. Gold FM, only the classic hits. I hope you're having fun so far. You're listening to The Ride. And I'm Kara, taking you through your afternoon. Stay with me to listen to more awesome classics right here on The Ride. Mulubinaka, for awesome sounds in the afternoon. Wonderful, wonderful classics. Join me on The Ride every weekday right here on Gold FM, only the classic hits from 2 to 7. Just don't ask me what it was. Lombasa won the boy Roy Krishna and the Wellington Phoenix will be coming to Fiji. Match details will be revealed over the coming weeks. Vodafone Fiji Sevens coach Ben Ryan is excited about the options he has available in the playmaking department for the Wellington Sevens this weekend. Apart from the slick footed, footed duo of Jerry Tuai and Vatemo Ravovo, Ryan is happy to see the return of Army star halfback Emosimu Levoro, who is set to light up the stage on fire in the windy capital. Talent Dadakaka has more. Emosimu Levoro is set to make his first appearance in the World 7 Series this season on Friday. The live wire halfback and playmaker missed the opening three legs due to injury and poor form, but has impressed coach Ben Ryan with his resilience and determination to seal a spot in the final 12 for the Wellington and Las Vegas tournaments. He's just got better and better every week and from being somebody that I thought I'm, I might use in Vegas, he's moved further and further up the peg, pecking order to him being in a position really where he, he, he's, he's now, his fitness has, has been, that box has been ticked, he's impressed more in the field, uh, his communication is excellent, he's a really good halfback in that respect. Muleboro is no stranger to the hustle and bustle of the World Series and was the fourth highest point scorer last season. Ryan believes Muleboro will provide the missing link to helping Fiji get its campaign back on track. Uh, he bosses the forwards around, they respect him. He's that little skinny halfback that makes the big tackles, gets his head where it hurts and um, can really lift the team by his performances and he's a, he's, a, he's a great guy off the field so we're lucky to have him back. 
with the attacking prowess of Mulevoro, Tuwai and Rabobo in the mix, together with the return of current World 7 Series Player of the Year, Samisoni Viriviri, Fiji will not lack any line-breaking ability for the Wellington Sevens. Talendo Dakadak, FBC Sports. Travelling hundreds of miles away from home, the TFL Fijiana side has also prepared for the conditions they will face in Brazil. Coach Ilesa Tanivula says the players have, a co have continued to impress him during training sessions with their improving performance and has also prepared them for the different weather conditions they may face in Brazil. It's something we've so spoken about, you know, um, uh, weather, it's something, you know, it's out of our control. Uh, if it's hot or too cold, uh, we just got to, you know, adjust and, you know, get on with it, you know, food-wise. Uh, but I will be, uh, World Rugby, sorry, World Rugby has been awesome, you know, on the accommodation and the, you know, and the nutrition uh, been given to players. And, uh, you know, I guess it's something uh, for us to learn uh, and try and, um, you know, uh, make it big in, in this game. And, you know, with, with limited resource. And I guess, you know, uh, we're punching our, above our weight and you know, we're getting there. The Fijiana is pooled with Australia, Brazil and China in the second round of the Women's World Series. Their first game is against China on Sunday. The New Zealand seven side suffered a major setback to defending the Wellington Sevens title this weekend. Veteran forward Tim Mickelson was ruled out with a groin injury sustained in training on Monday, but the Kiwis are determined not to let Mickelson's absence hinder their mission to win on home turf. The Futsal League competition in the Western Division kicks off tonight in Lautoka. The sport, which was struggling to find its place in the West, received a boost by way of financial backing enabling futsal promoters to organize the competition. Josephine Navula has the details. The futsal competition has been receiving a lot of inquiries since its launch in the West. Coordinator Fayaz Ali says they want to make the sport active in the division. Futsal in West is dead, and as you have said rightly, that uh, most of them are using FMF down in Suva. And I think we are playing open soccer, and uh, the view is beautiful near the seaside. And I think uh, the interest have generated over the years. The organizers have secured sponsors and are looking forward to top class competition. This, this tournament will run for six weeks. We have five weeks of pool game. And the sixth week will be the knockout for quarterfinal, semifinal, third and fourth, and the final. And then straight after this tournament, there will be Easter tournaments. So all the religious teams that will be participating in the Easter tournament, they can also have a match here. Ali believes the tournament will also help in developing local soccer players for the future. $1,000 has been set aside for the winners of the competition. Josephine Novula, FBC Sports. 19-year-old Eroni Tuwai has secured a three-month contract with the National Rugby League's under-20 Bulldogs. Tuwai says it is a dream come true for him and he is thankful for the support that he has received. Also commending the young Nandrangal lad was Coral Coast Sevens chairman Jay White, who says Tuwai deserves the contract as he has worked very hard since joining Rugby League. Two years ago he only just started playing Rugby League and to see the transformation that's happened in that short time and now the, the opportunity to join the uh, Bulldogs is quite special. Um, you know, A lot of support that stands here with him today and a uh, special word of thanks to Suli for his support as well in uh, driving um, this uh, initiative and uh, we're really proud of him. Tuai was scouted by renowned NRL players Brad Fittler and Andrew Johns during the ninth tournament in Lawanga Park, Singatoka last year. That's your sports for this evening. It's back to Jackie now with your business. <laughs> The government has amended the television cross of designated events decree. This means the remaining legs of the Sevens World Series, beginning from this weekend with the Wellington Sevens, will be shown live by IPC TV and Fiji TV. Fijian Holdings Limited CEO Nozab Farid confirms IPC TV has signed a sub licensing agreement in order to receive its feed. Rugby Sevens is no more a question. The agreement that we sign on that day allows Fiji TV to get the feed from World Rugby, because World Rugby has agreed to give that feed. Subject to, we are sharing with FBC, subject to the government removing that from the designated events.
Limited has also clarified FBC does not owe it any money for the feed. Fareed says FBC has paid the live television feed on time. Cloud and showers was experienced over most places. A trough of low pressure lies over Vanuatu and extends over south of Fiji and to southern Tonga to southern Cooks. Maximum temperatures hit the 30s today. Suva and Savu Savu recorded 35 degrees. Tomorrow's outlook, occasional rain and few thunderstorms over most places. Isolated heavy falls expected. Rain then easing over most places tomorrow. The outlook for Friday, some showers over most places. And the main points again, the British High Commission in Suva says a new national flag will not in any way affect relations between the UK and Fiji. Police are requesting information from the public about pictures circulating on the internet showing toddlers allegedly consuming alcohol and smoking cigarettes. And the new US ambassador, Judith Sefkin, has relayed her government's commitment to working with Fiji in a meeting with Prime Minister Borengen Bainimarama. To our poll question this week in light of the recent drowning of an under... 17 player we ask should managers travel with fiji soccer teams on overseas trips visit our fbc website to take part remember you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email citizens eyes at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via facebook page fbc news and if you're on twitter follow and tweet us your news tips at fbc news or simply hashtag fbc news that's our news for today join us again tomorrow bye for now Missamapo, the other